Okay, so welcome everybody. Uh, my name's Dr. Julie Sutton. And okay, so I'm a senior lecturer in practice learning at the Faculty of Health and Social Care at the University of Chester. And I'm going to talk to you for about 15 minutes on um, practice learning. So how you will learn on place clinical placement whilst you're on the three year pre-registration nursing program. Um, okay, and we're going to look at some of the expectations that you might have of when you go out onto placement in the, on the wards or in the community and, and some of the support that's unique to the University of Chester to support you when you're doing practice learning. So the University of Chester, um, we run um, pre-registration nursing programs in all four fields of nursing. So that's adult nursing, children's nursing, mental health nursing, and also learning disability nursing. Um, so what I want to say is if you've got any, any questions as I move throughout this presentation, um, please feel free to put them in the chat function. And what I'm gonna do is at the end of 15 minutes is I'm going to um, answer all your questions at the end, basically do a Q and A session at the end. So as I said, there's four fields of nursing, which the, we offer pre-registration nurse education in at Chester. And one of them is learning disability nursing. So I am a learning disability nurse by background. And for those of you who aren't familiar with this very exciting and rewarding field of nursing, um, a learning disability nurse works in a, a lots of different settings. They can work in, in short break facilities, um, in residential homes for adults with learning disabilities and behaviours that challenge. They can be a community nurse going out to visiting families with children with learning disabilities or in inpatient settings if somebody's um, home placement has broken down and they may have a mental health issue. Okay, but essentially a learning disability nurse works with um, children, supports children, adults and elderly people with learning disabilities to ensure their complex health needs, physical and mental health needs are met. There's a lot of advocacy involved in this role to ensure they receive equitable health care. And it's very much about empowering people with learning disabilities to lead meaningful and independent lives. So really, if you wanted to ask anything about a career in learning disability nursing, please do that. So at the end as well, if you've got questions of any of the other four, uh, three fields of nursing as well, I'm happy to take questions on everything. OK, so when you start at the University of Chester on your three year pre-registration nurse programme, we don't you don't go straight out into practice you know we ease you in gently and so that you feel fully prepared for your role to be professional as a student nurse wearing the university of chester student nurse uniform representing the university and so that you feel confident to go out onto placement okay and basically at the moment if you start with us in September, um, due to the current COVID-19 emergency, um, all new, brand new student nurses, you'll be doing quite a lot of theoretical modules first, either online or at university, depending on the situation. And all of this will be to prepare you for going out onto your clinical placement, okay? Um, so once the emergency is passed, then you know, it will be safe for you to go out onto placement. Okay, so our course is validated by the Nursing and Midwifery Council and over the three years you will do 50% of your learning um, theoretically in university or online, um, which accounts for 2,300 hours over three years and you will do 50% of your learning out in practice on placements over three years and that equates to 2,300 hours in practice. So that's how it's a 50-50 split, okay? So as I said, before you go out onto placement, you'll do some theoretical modules and some practice modules, which give you some skills around mandatory skills, around moving and handling, infection prevention and control, 
taking baseline observations such as blood pressures you know and it's natural to feel anxious before you start a placement but we'll we do everything we can to help you um, with that we could offer peer support with other student nurses who are a bit further on you know we encourage you to buddy up with those sometimes so that um, you know that all these feelings are natural but this is how you can best manage them so lots of coping strategies we'll go through with you okay so as I say once the uh, COVID-19 emergency is passed and it's safe to go into practice you'll be offered a variety of placements ranging from six to 12 weeks long okay and the placements cover quite a wide geographical area I mean that's a bit of a strength really for the University of Chester you know across the Cheshire and Wirral area so we do expect you to travel but you can claim placement travel expenses back okay as long as you sort of keep receipts and keep a, a log of everything okay so when you go out onto placement you'll be placed within NHS acute trusts or within hospital settings but also with NHS community trusts so which provide community care for patients and service users in the community you will also have placements with private, independent and voluntary organisations as well. So it's a real mix of, of um, places that you can be placed. So in terms of geographical spread, OK, you can see there that, um, you know, you can be placed um, in Chester. There's placements in on the Wirral, placements in Warrington, OK placements in Macclesfield as well okay so quite a, a, a quite a large sort of area there so I hope everyone can see that okay okay so as I say do drop your thoughts as you wish as, as we go along now so that um, I know that everyone's okay okay so OK, so in terms of your placement circuit, depending on which field of nursing that you choose, OK, um, some of the first placements that you'll be placed on uh, would be what you know, we ease you in. You'll be on, um, say, particular um, placements such as outpatient placements with on, on wards, surgical and medical wards on with community district nurses to start with. And then the placements tend to build in in complexity as you move towards your third year. OK, um, placements such as critical care, um, inpatient learning disability facilities, complex mental health um, care settings. OK, and some of the students who that I've been teaching recently have just done a quick visual of exactly where they think they're going to be placed. OK, and you can see there they've got things like care homes, GP surgeries, acute boards, community schools as well, you know, with school nurses, with um, community health practitioners. OK. So that just gives you an idea, you know, where you're going to have them. And it's fantastic, you know, to be able to, you know, get such a broad range of experiences when you're doing your, your, your three year preparation programme to be a nurse, because you really get a sense of where you do want to work and also get a sense of where you definitely don't want to work. And that could be because of the type of patients that you're working with, or it could be with different teams or settings or physical environments, which you think, all oh, that, you know, that's definitely not for me. I can't stand driving around in my car, you know, the community. I definitely want to be on a ward. But you'll get a flavour of all of those settings throughout your three-year programme. So it's super exciting. OK, so when you're out in practice, um, you have to achieve a certain set of practice competencies. OK, and at one time you had this all written down on a paper document which you carried with you from one placement to the other. And you carried this document with you for three years. So you can imagine it got quite um, a bit dog-eared at the end, some coffee stains or whatever. Well, that's all changed now. And all of your practice learning is kept on online now. So we've got a, like a, a regular um, document online, which you can keep updating. It's like a live document. 
So whoever is supporting you in practice, so you'll be allocated a practice assessor and a practice supervisor. And these are experienced or registered um, healthcare professionals um, on placements who will be teaching and coaching and assessing you. They will have access to this online practice assessment record as well. So, you know, you can be at home updating it, saying, I think I've done this really well or I've struggled with that. And they can give you feedback as well from the ward if you were to, you know, so it's a fantastic way of keep, of recording and monitoring your practice learning when you're out on placement. And your tutors at the university can see it as well. So there's like three sets of people who can all see, monitor your progress, if there's any problems, you know, we can get in early and to try and support you. OK, so another real sort of selling point and strength that I feel to the University of Chester is that we have a relatively new role called the Lecturers in Practice Learning, of which I am one. And we've been around for about three years. And this additional role is like a pastoral role to support you when you go out on placement. And the role was developed as a result of student feedback, really. Students saying that, you know, each time they go on to placement, it can feel a bit like starting a brand new job. You know, you've got to get to know the whole new ward environment or the new service environment. You've got to get to know a new staff team, where to park, um, all the new policies and procedures. So it can be quite daunting, really. So we always, as the lecture and practice learning team, you will already know us because we will have been involved in your early lectures, but we will then go out to see you on your very first placement to see how you're going on, to check in with you, check everything, you know, you understand the expectations that are of you. So that's like another layer of support now, um, which is for you so that you can succeed. OK, so the ways in which myself as a lecturer in practice learning have supported student nurses in practice before some examples have been if a practice assessor so a, a qualified nurse who's supporting a student out on placement perhaps sometimes they might have expected too much of a student um, they might have thought that they were more ex expect them to do things commensurate with a third year student nurse rather than a first or a second year and I've had to go into the placement and advocate on behalf of the student and say you know rein it in a bit you know she she's not quite at that level or he's not quite at that level so it's really important that this you know the students you know is assessed in a fair and equitable way so that's one example. I've helped students to raise safeguarding concerns as well in practice because that takes quite a bit of courage to do that, you know, because um, you it's quite a daunting prospect, okay? And I also help students to develop resilient strategies, problem-solving skills, and also to ensure that any reasonable adjustments that need to be made for the student whilst they're out in practice because they are neurodiverse. You know, for instance, if, if a student has um, dyslexia or dyspraxia, you know, we will put in place with the student a reasonable adjustment placement plan to make sure that the, the placement can uh, make sure your learning needs are catered to. So for instance, if you need um, coloured overlays on the work to read the nursing notes, then that is in place there for you and you are supported. OK, so just these are a couple of comments about what student nurses have said about the support that's offered to them. So we've got practice visits that's offered by the lecturer and practice learning team. They're comforting as a check in and the friendly face is more than welcome during placements when you can sometimes feel quite alone. I mean, sometimes when you start placement, you might be the only student nurse on that ward or on that setting. There might be some other students from another university there. There might be students from a third year, but sometimes you're on your, on your own and it can feel a bit like that. So it's nice to know that, you know, that link is still there with the university. OK. Um, we've got another one here. Uh, they were really helpful, the practice visits in tackling situations with practice supervisors 
I would otherwise not know how to handle great advice and support when needed. So I think that's it. We're trying to be responsive to your, your needs when you're out on placement. Okay. And last but not least, um, the practice visits help my development in practice, such as building resilience to cope with stress, learning how to communicate better with my practice assessor about my learning needs. Okay. So that's really what some of the students have said about their um, experience of practice learning here at the University of Chester. OK, so that's my 15 minutes done. So I'm going to answer some of the questions now that have been coming through on the live chat. Um, and, you know, we can have we've got 15 minutes to do that now. So thanks ever so much for listening. OK, so we've got a question here from Lee. Would you like to say something about the employment prospects in the UK for this course, please? OK, Lee, thanks very much. That's a really good question. So a lot of the student nurses, well, all the student nurses who are qualifying uh, currently, you know, when they're finishing their course and, and um, graduating, because this is a, a three year degree programme, you know, at the end of this course, you come out with a degree. In, in, in nursing and also your registration as a nurse as well as it's an occupational qualification but the nurses who are finishing this three-year program you know they tend to get you know two or three different job offers you know really um they're in a, a very strong position you know to to work and to choose uh, where they want to work as well at the moment um, because we know there is a, a national shortage of, of nurses at the moment. And, you know, really that's for, for, for all fields. Um, you know, you are a precious resource and, and we, we really do want to, you know, continue providing this high quality uh, pre-registration nurse education. So, yeah, plenty of jobs out there for you to, um, to uh, look at. So, if if I've if you want to ask any more on that question, please do leave. If you don't feel like I've answered it properly, okay. So I've got one from. Sorry, I think that you may I can't pronounce you. I've got Naomi James. It's Naomi. Okay. So, is the masters in pre-registration nursing similar to the undergraduate course? Do you get to choose what campus you study at? Similarly, do you get to choose where the placements are? OK, so there's three questions there. So the master's in pre-registration nursing is similar to the undergraduate course. Um, I can't comment specifically on the length of that. I think you'd need to um, check that because I don't teach on that particular course. But in terms of the requirements to um, register as a nurse with the Nursing and Midwifery Council, you know, you will still need to do that same amount of practice hours. With the master's uh, programme, you will be coming out with a higher level qualification, obviously, other than just a, a bachelor's of science. So it will be different in that way. But in terms of getting your qualification to register and practice as a nurse, it's, it's still the same 2,300 hours in practice. OK, yes, you do get to choose which campus you study at. It depends really... If you were going to do the adult field of nursing, then that particular field of nursing runs at all four sites. So we have four sites at the University of Chester. The first one is Chester. It's called Riverside and it's quite next to the race course. So it's a beautiful setting. Um, you can, we've also got a site at Wirral called Maris House. We have a site at Leighton and we have a site at Warrington. OK. And all four sites offer adult nursing. Uh, and there's currently two intakes a year, one in March and one in September. OK, so you've got quite a bit of choice if you wanted to do adult nursing. Um, child and learning disability nursing just operate from the main campus at Chester. And mental health nursing just runs at the Warrington site and at the Riverside site. OK. Do you get to choose where the placements are geographically? Well, what happens is we, we ask you to obviously let us know where your place of residence is during when you're a student, whether that's halls or residence or, 
live near to the university. And what we like is to, we try and match, get, get you a placement as close to home as possible. But sometimes with pressure on placements, that isn't always possible. And the maximum travel time that we would um, expect you to travel would be an hour and a an hour and forty five minutes maximum. You you would be very unlucky in three years to get you know more than two placements where there was that quite excessive travel time. Okay, um, mostly students average out on about half an hour, forty minutes. You know to get to their placement. If it does become unmanageable, you know, we can try and support you and, and offer and think about creatively of how you can get to that placement. Is there anyone else, any other students living around that area that you could potentially stay with, friends and relatives? Sometimes you do have to be creative, but if that means you're going to get a more rounded and um, diverse experience as a student nurse, then sometimes if it's only for six weeks, that can be a great payoff, really. OK, so Naomi, if you would like some more master's info, help us email. OK, so someone's um, replied to you on that. OK. All right. So, we've, yeah, so we've got some responses there to add to your questions there. Naomi. But thank you so much for your questions. Um, OK. That's all right. You're very, very welcome. But if there's any questions about um, learning disability nursing as well, I don't know if that's something that anybody's um, thought about, you know, feel free to ask about that as well. Because um, obviously that's my particular field of nursing. That's why I'm sort of trying to promote it a little bit. OK. OK, you're very welcome. Okay, so I've got another question there. Will the government support this course, please, as it is in shortage? Okay, so what I am aware of is that there are different types of bursaries that the government is offering um, for student nurses. And um, basically the situation changes, um, I would say, you know, on an annual basis with this because at one time, you know, that the fees um, weren't in place. So I think it's about watch this space, but I, I would I would urge you to, you know, email PR and inquiries about this really to, to see what the latest position is from the government in terms of financial support. OK, um, in terms of other financial support that I'm aware that the University of Chester offers is, um, there is a financial hardship fund that the university as a whole offers students who are particularly struggling with finance. And um, it's to the, all students from the University of Chester. But we do know that this fund is accessed possibly more by student nurses because they do spend such a lot of time out on placement. So, but that particular fund, you know, you can apply to that fund and money is there available. You know, it's, it's difficult to, you know, put together all your evidence for that, but that's there as a, as a, as a last resort, really. Um, and we do know, to say, that student nurses access that fund and are successful in, in, in getting grants as well. So that's an additional bit of University of Chester support financially. But as I say, um, I would email PR and inquiries to, to see what the current bursary system is on that because I couldn't you know, say that with full confidence, really. OK, thank you.
Welcome. Okay, so what I'll do is I'm going to end that now because I don't seem to be any more questions coming through. But thanks ever so much for everybody. And I do hope you choose University of Chester to embark on your exciting student nurse journey. Okay, thank you. Oh, hello. Do you get any men who choose to do this course? Loads of men. We do, yeah. We we're truly trying to encourage as many men to um, access this course as possible because, you know, everyone becomes a patient at some time in their life, male or female, and it can be fantastic to have, you know, someone of the same uh, gender as yourself to, to come and, um, you know, care for you, you know, um so definitely we need some more male role models within nursing and that goes for all four fields of nursing uh definitely definitely we welcome you Okay, so I've got any more details for the three qualifications? I'm not sure what you mean there. Do, do you mean that the, well, there's four fields of nursing? Is that what you're talking about? Or the three qualifications? What, what do you mean there? Okay, so um, the course um, which I've talk, been talking about is the three-year uh, pre-registration nursing programme. Okay, um, at the end of this um, programme, you come out with a, a Bachelor of Nursing, so a degree in nursing, and also a um, registration with the Nursing and Midwifery Council as a registered nurse. And you can choose at the start to do um, adult nursing. So that's a nurse who works um, with people who are sick in, in the hospitals or in the community as a district nurse. Um, or you could choose to work with people, do mental health nursing. And this would mean that you are look, taking care of the people who um, have mental health issues. So low level mental health issues such as depression, anxiety or more um, severe uh, mental health issues such as schizophrenia or dementia okay um, or you could choose to do children's nursing so specializing in looking after children and young people um, and, and for this qualification you, know, you would be working in hospital settings in school nursing in the community or lastly those learning disability nursing where you um, do the course but you have a specialism towards supporting children adults and elderly people with learning disabilities to ensure that their complex health care needs are met okay so there's four qualifications there there's adult nursing mental health nursing children's nursing or learning disability nursing okay so you come out with either one of those plus a degree in, in nursing, a Bachelor of Nursing degree at the end of the three years on this pre-registration nursing programme. Okay. Does that answer your question? That's okay. No worries.
which particular field of nursing are you interested in doing? Well, a question from Hannah. Is there a possibility to be accepted into adult nursing with a D in maths and a C English as your only qualifications at age 29? Okay. Okay. So, um, you would have to email PR and inquiries about that. I think that the um, inquiries at Chester about that and, and, and be put through to the admissions department. OK, but I do know that there are access courses that um, student nurses can do if they don't have the traditional um you know, A levels uh, that that you need. So, uh, th it may be that there's the an access course that you could take. And sometimes, you know, we look at APEL in people's experience and other qualifications. And that means APEL means accreditation of prior experience of learning. So sometimes that that can count. So I'm sure you've done lots of other things before you were 29. You know that so hopefully some are to do with caring you know then that might help count towards it so there are other routes other than the traditional route but you need to um have that discussion really with the admissions department and perhaps start off by emailing um pre-registration prn inquiries at chester okay so okay so I think it's Quigging, Quiggingly. Um, sorry, if I've not pronounced your name right, I'm sure. So you're thinking about doing learning disability nursing. OK, so that's fabulous. So I'll just sort of um, give you a bit more depth information about that. So I, I've been a learning disability nurse since 1996 and I've had a really fantastic um, career, very, very diverse so I started uh, supporting children in a short break home um, where children who've got um, profound, complex, multiple learning disabilities um, would go for, to have a little break, uh, say for a week, one week every six weeks to give the parents a bit of a break as well. So we would make sure all their complex health needs were met and they had like a little holiday you know away so that's as a learning disability nurse I worked in that setting to start with okay I also supported then went into a respite home for children with learning disabilities and challenging behavior so in the same way where the parents needed a bit of a break the children needed a break from the parents they would go and stay there for a week so a learning disability nurse could work in that setting as well and my work was very much around assessing their behaviour problems and trying to work out why they were behaving as they were to try and, and see if that behaviour could be improved. I then I worked with adults with learning disabilities in a residential home. I spent some time in America on a summer camp for children with ADHD, which is Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder and Learning Difficulties. And that was fantastic to see how it's all done over there in the States. And then I became a community nurse. So I would support, go out to visit families of children with learning disabilities and try and advise them on how to improve the child's sleep. Um, because often sleep problems are a big issue for children with disabilities. Help to improve the child's continence. So give lots of creative ideas on toilet training. Um, dealt with uh, trying to teach the children as young people about sexual health and puberty. Um, and um, a lot of work around correct management of epilepsy as well. Um, and then I've done my PhD in recent years at Bangor University as well, looking at research into sleep problems and children with disabilities. So a really varied career. You know, you can work in lots of different settings and, you know, it's just been so never, ever been bored, ever. So I would definitely recommend it. Okay, so Naomi, uh, sorry, is it Neve? Um, okay, what mental health support is available for students? Okay, so at the University of Chester, we have a student support, student futures it's called, and that's our 
uh, resource and that's for all students from all faculties at the University of Chester and within that team we have uh, mental health advisors which uh, can be mental health nurses themselves or counsellors and you know that's a free access for student nurses to access that counselling facility um, or any other type of cognitive behavioural therapy um, type support there as well okay obviously my role as a lecturer in practice learning you know it is very much pastoral I do want to go out and check you getting on or okay on placements I do would need you to contact me once you get into the three years to, to check in how you're going in addition the University of Chester you will be allocated a personal academic tutor and this person will stay with you for three years they're a lecturer at the university so if you have any particular issues over the three years you always link in with your personal academic tutor or your PAT your PAT for short so that's another layer of pastoral support and they support you with academic work as well okay so um, plenty of support there for you um, okay yeah, I agree. So, yeah, um, we've got, wow, sounds great future to make a difference for disabled people. Definitely. And I think you've hit the nail on the head there. It is about being passionate about working with people with learning disabilities. And it is about trying to make a difference in their lives and try to empower them to um, become everything they can be, really. So it's a lot of advocacy in that role as a learning disability nurse, a lot of advocacy. Okay. Okay. Um, do you know if the university will begin in September as previously planned, or will this be disrupted due to COVID nineteen? Okay. So the September nineteen course at the University of Chester for pre-registration nursing students. This program is running. We are planning and writing it now. Um, so yes, it will run. Um, whether we start doing some lectures remotely online to start with, uh, we still don't know. But there are we definitely the course will definitely be running. Uh, so do please do apply. Yeah. Um, okay. But. As I say, the lecturers, we're, we're writing the course to start in September. So we're making plans as if we are starting. Um, and we look forward to welcoming students in September. Okay. Okay. So... Um, what we like to say is when you start, there's a question here. So when do you choose the type of nursing or the field of nursing that you want to study? So when you um, apply to the course, we, we do like you to say, oh, OK, I want to do learning disability nursing or children's nursing and state that. And you apply for a place on that programme um, because some of the numbers you know, are limited. So children's nursing tends to be oversubscribed lots of people want to do children's nursing so there's only so many places on that course there tends to be more places on adult nursing and mental health and learning disability nursing so that's why we like you to specify at the start which field of nursing you want to do but uh, it's not within the realms of possibility to for you to swap once you get in after six months eight months or so if you think you've made the wrong decision um we don't actively encourage students to do that and you know that would only be possible if there was a place on that other alternative field of nursing course at the time it might need you might mean that you have to swap sites i, I don't know um but uh, we would encourage you to say at the start, and, and you, you, we do say you have to apply to one particular field. So you do really have to make that decision before you start and when you apply, which field of nursing that you want to 
um, become a member of. Okay, how many days a week do we attend classes? Okay, so that's a really good question. What I forgot to say is when you're out on placement, okay, so a six or a 12 week placement, you um, very often we bring you back into university just for one day or two days split, you know, over the six weeks. Um, and that is just for you to touch base back, back at the university, back with your student nurse peers, and to check that everything's going okay for you on placement and to try and encourage you to make a link between theory and to practice. Okay, so we call them theory to practice days. So, so we will bring you back into university for two days, maximum of two days whilst you're on a six week placement. Okay, so that might be one day in week three and then one day in week five. You will come back in for a full day, okay? Then the rest of the time, when you're not on placement, um, there's blocks of study where you will be in university. And it tends to, it doesn't tend to be every day that you're in university. There's, there is a lot of self-directed adult-focused study where you can you know, do library work. You don't have to physically attend lectures. Um, so it's not often that you're in, you know, every day. The lectures start at half past nine in the morning and they can be just morning lectures, half past nine to half past 12 or afternoon lectures, half past one to half past four. Sometimes you're in for a full day. Um, and yeah, you know, as I say, it's unusual for Sometimes, so we have, um, I'm trying to think now to the whole programme, we have um, special weeks called uh, practice simulation weeks where we've, so at Chester we've got a really fantastic um, clinical skills uh, suite and it's like a mock ward for like a mock hospital ward with lots of um, technology in there. So we try and simulate patient care in it, like a ward based. OK, and so we do lots and lots of exercises within that setting to help teach you how to become a nurse. And those weeks, you know, where you're constantly in the clinical skills lab are called practice simulation weeks. Um, we also have community, uh, mock-up community um, homes. So, you know, we we do a lot of the learning disability nurses, students would be doing uh, lessons in, those, in that sort of setting to sort of act out, you know, what you would be expected of you as a community learning disability nurse. Um, so, so sometimes we will have you in for a whole week just to do, you know, practice simulations such as that. But oft, more often than not, it's, I don't know, averages about about two, three, four times, you know, a week. And sometimes it's half day, sometimes it's full days. It's, it's, it's a bit difficult to answer that one, if I'm honest. OK. Should English be at a very fluent level for international students as the course half happens half and half? in replacement okay okay so um we do have um quite a bit of support for international students whose english is a second language so if you think that's going to going to be a particular um challenge for you uh, as as a student nurse you know we do have lots of international students doing doing nursing um we also have a study skills um, department at the University of Chester to help you with um, writing some of the assi theoretical assignments as well. So if you were, if your spoken English was really good, but you struggled with writing it, you know, that would be another avenue of support that the University of Chester could offer. So there's that. So there's um, English as a foreign language. Uh, support there but also more generic study skills support there which would be of use to you but I think you know that we, we do really need quite a good fluency in English to be able to communicate 
um, with patients and service users. So, um, but all of that will be assessed in your application um, in terms of what your qualifications are. So you'll, you'll, you'll definitely um, know when you go through the application process. Okay. Some really good questions. If there's any more, still happy to stay here and, and, and answer them. Okay. Very welcome. Okay, so really good question there from Karina. Okay, what would you suggest buying any books before starting? Hmm, I don't know. Uh, that's a good question. It depends what field of nursing you want to go into. Uh, so um, it would be hard to make some recommendations on that. Um, hmm. It might be what I would tend to do would perhaps look at there is a journal of, of nursing, um, which is quite good for student nurses to start looking at. And it's an academic journal and it's called The Nursing Times. So that comes out once a month. And uh, if you go online and just Google Nursing Times, OK, that will help you um, learn about all the current issues within nursing. And it also offers, you know, lots of useful links to training websites. And <clears throat> I think that would get your head in the zone for what it's like to be a nurse um, from any of the fields of nursing, any, from any of the four fields of nursing. So if you were just to get hold of this month's um, publication of the Nursing Times, I think that would make sure that you're really current you're really up to date you know what's happening at the moment and obviously there'll be a lot of research in there about COVID-19 but we like nurses to be up to date so in some ways reading publications you know that's um can be more helpful than reading a whole huge big textbook which can be quite off-putting because sometimes those textbooks can rapidly go out of date so I, you know, it's a more manageable chunk, and to I would look up the Nursing Times, read this month's um, publication, and that would get yourself into the zone. You get used to some of the language that's used within uh, the nursing profession, because sometimes I, I, I know when I started, I felt like I was learning another language altogether. You know, looking at all this different terminology, all these medical terms the names of different health professionals, what on earth does an occupational therapist does, what does a radiographer do, what does paediatrics mean, you know. So it just gets you into the zone of, of, of different terms that are used, um, latest policies. So I think that would be quite a nice thing to read. Uh, I think you'll feel really well prepared if you start getting used to reading that, okay. Thank you. OK, so I've got what size do the uniforms go up to? Um, I can't really answer that question. Um, I wouldn't use it. I'm sure, you know, that's not something that um, should be a boundary to uh, a barrier to you coming onto onto a course. You know, uh, obviously, um, in order to do a placement, you know, the placements are, you know, you'd be doing, when you're on shift, what I forgot to say about a placement is that you work for a 37 and a half hour week when you're on a placement. 
and the shifts are, you know, you work shifts. So you could do an early shift, which is half past seven in the morning till half past three or a late shift, you know, starting, I think, at two-ish. So it depends what the structure is on the ward. Or you could do long days, which are 11 at, sorry, 12 hour shifts. And they're quite taxing really in terms of being on your feet for 12 hours with a, some breaks in between. And obviously, you'd be expected to work weekends and also um, night shifts occasionally as well. So I think, you know, as long as you're in good physical health and you've got occupational health clearance, you know, there will be a place for you here at Chester. And the size of the uniform, you know, that that, that won't be an issue. You know, I, I would say dress size. I've probably, probably seen dress sizes up to... I think probably size 20, 21, 22, probably. Um, yeah, I hope that helps. Okay, so where are we up to now? Um, okay. Should students prepare very good knowledge in science, such as biology and chemistry? Okay. I think if you were to read the nursing times beforehand, that should be fine. You know, if you've done um, a GCSE in biology and chemistry, you know, a bit of anatomy and physiology, I think, from, from a biology point of view, rather than chemistry, you know, if you wanted to recap on that, that's absolutely fine. But, you know, you will receive anatomy and physiology lessons and you know lectures on different diseases and um, health promotion obviously uh, as part of the course so I wouldn't worry too much okay which hospitals are our placements most likely to be that depends uh, Charlotte on which site you opt to study the course at if you study want to do your nursing um, at Chester at Riverside campus, the main hospital attached to that campus is the Countess of Chester Hospital. If you uh, want to study at Maris House and the Wirral, um, it used to be Clatterbridge, I think it's, it's the name of the hospital, I think it's still called that. Um, I'm actually based at, at main campus in um, Riverside, so that's why I'm a bit vague on that. Um, if you choose to do the course at Warrington, be Warrington Hospital and Leighton at Leighton Hospital. OK, so it does depend where your main site is. Sometimes you can get a placement in out of area in any of the other sites, but that doesn't tend to happen that often. OK, so that's the hospital question. Um, so it's a little... Uh, okay. Right. Okay. Hannah. Okay. Would it be able to have any support at the interview stage, such as being asked what questions will, will be asked so I could prepare? Okay. Um, I'm going to ask you, Hannah, to direct that um query to prn inquiries um i've not come across that before but what i would say um is that the interview process is is really quite relaxed and informal and uh, you know we we sort of might ask you thing it, it's not like um an hour-long interview that you have um they tend to be group interviews with other prospective student nurses all sitting around together like a little relaxed and friendly focus group. Um, and we also would do a quick sort of one to one, sort of 10 to 15 minute chat really with you. But what we're, what we're essentially looking for in all fields of nursing, no matter what field you apply for, Hannah, um, we're essentially looking for it the fact that you know you've got a good value base and that you know we want to know why 
why you come in, want to come into nursing, you know, what's what's brought you to this point? You know, have you been caring for an elderly relative or have you done some voluntary work or you just want a role that's really um, rewarding? You know, you want to give something back. You know, we, we want you to be honest and show your own personality at, at interview. We're not it's not about, we won't be catching you out. We won't be asking what your knowledge is of the heart or we won't be asking you um, what your knowledge is of all the different mental health conditions that are out there. Okay, all of that academic side will have been looked at in the admissions process. The purpose of the interviews is just for us to get a feel for what your value base is and that you're a caring person that you you know you're compassionate i would look at the six c's of nursing so you know, look up that six c's so that i think that's care compassion communication courage um there's a, a few others there i can't read off the top of my head but we're, we're looking for all of those um characteristics really um it, in, in our student nurses so that sort of interview process is is just relax be yourself and, and 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 bring something personable to that interview saying why you want to be a nurse you know what what is it about you know looking after people with learning disabilities that interest you so much what is it about working with children why do you want to work with children why do you want to work with people with mental health issues we really want that passion to come across okay where is okay so i've said latin sorry it's Leighton hospital not latin hospital so Leighton hospital is at crew okay um so before i sort of put up a little um map so you can you see that we've got chester here and then we're all coming out here into the into the sea and Crewe is here and Warrington is here. So that'll just give you a bit of an idea as to where the, so the Leighton Hospital or the Leighton Campus is based at Crewe. Okay, so you can, they run adult nursing there currently. So that is an option if that's where you're, you're based. Okay. Okay, thank you, Charlotte. Okay, so Rosaline's asked a really good question in terms of the hours of your placement, okay, when you're out on placement. Okay, so what we'd like you to do is when you start a placement is we'd like you to make contact with the ward manager or the service manager a couple of weeks before. You'll be told, you know, about six weeks before where you're going. And we'd like you to ring them up, introduce yourself, uh, check out about where transport facilities get in there where to park things like that okay and okay okay so i'm just reading my questions there um yeah so uh, and at that time when you introduce yourself to the ward manager um, it might be a good idea to say, oh, sorry, you know, if you've got any prior commitments, say you've got a wedding coming up or a, a birthday party, to say you can request certain shifts. You say, can I not work on that day or can I have that weekend off? But we just like advise you to be reasonable with those requests. So, so you'd say, I'd like, you know, um, two or three make two or three requests maximum okay and the reason for that is we're trying to mirror what it will be like for you when you uh, finish the course and you go out into the into the world of employment okay you won't be able to dictate as a nurse where um, the times your shift system okay if you were to work on a hospital ward you know you will be given your off duty you know for six weeks in advance so then you can plan your life around that and your child care and any other care and responsibilities around that um and you know you do have to work the same shifts that are uh, assigned to that team so if they do long days you, you would be expected to do long days as well 
Um, sometimes, you know, you have a placement with a health visiting team. So they work Monday to Friday, nine to five. So you wouldn't be working any weekends and any nights if you were on a six week placement with a health visiting team. You might have a placement with the school nursing team, with a community nursing team or with a district nursing team. And they will also always all work Monday to Friday, nine to five. But if you're in a hospital setting or in a, a residential home for people with learning disabilities that needs 24 hour care, you, know, you will be expected to do that full range of shifts and uh, you know, to work alongside your um, practice accessories allocated to you as well. So if you were to say, oh, can I only do mornings and your practice assessor does mainly night shifts, they're not going to be able to see you and observe you in practice. So um, to get the most out of the placement, I think if you can be as flexible as possible. Um, we have had some students who have got, you know, four or five children, you know, and they've really struggled with childcare to do certain shifts, okay, or with problems with public transport. So that, you know, sometimes there can be exceptions made to that rule where someone can say, can I mostly have mornings, please, just because I really struggle for childcare in the afternoon. Um, but more often than not, we, we, we encourage students to so get the best out of that practice learning experience to um, try and, and fit in with the shifts that are allocated to you. But again, you can make a couple of requests if you've got thin, something special events happening or you've got a hospital appointment yourself as long as it's obviously not lots and lots of requests because that just won't mirror what it's going to be like for you when you finish okay okay but as i say with shifts you know you will the nursing midwifery council says student nurses you have to experience the full range of 24 hour care. So um, while she won't be expected to do nights on every placement, at some point in your three years, you know, you could expect to do like a week of nights as a minimum over three years, but do expect to work um, weekends and have days off in the week, you know, from time to time as well. Okay. Okay, you're welcome. So I'll just wait a little bit longer now, see if anybody think they've got any other questions to, to answer. Okay, so I think we're probably going to leave it there now. There's, uh, okay, thanks. That brings this lecture. Effect. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Okay, I'll go now. All right, well, thanks ever so much for all your questions, and I really look forward to welcoming you to Chester. Okay, thank you. Bye.